Welcome back to the show. Check out these headlines we have for you. Stablecoin launch is going to make Ripple number one. You're going to love it. The world's preparing to go digital. We're going to prove it. XRP World Reserve Bridge Currency. I've always believed it. Today I'm going to show it to you. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. And by the way, today, join us in the Freedom Zone where we're going to be talking about the woke culture. You ain't going to want to miss this. It's, it's fun. You're going to love it. Right now, $2.78 trillion market cap for cryptocurrency. It's off by 1.6, but it's $70,600 plus for Bitcoin, $3,600 plus for Ethereum, $107 plus billion market cap for Tether. XRP is $0.63, cents, up 3 0.4% on the 24 and up 7.6 on the seven day range of price between 60 and 64 cents. We'll keep an eye on it. And you better keep an eye on this, ladies and gentlemen. 23 days left till XRP Las Vegas. And I'm not kidding. Get your ticket if you're going to come, ladies and gentlemen, because. We are working with the facility, and they're amazing. These people are absolutely high-quality people. But if we can't get more space, we may have to stop selling tickets. So get your tickets so you're guaranteed to come. No doubt about it. Uh, and I want to tell you, too, don't forget to get your Future of Digital Asset Benefit Dinner ticket and have private dinner with Brad Garlinghouse, Christian Carlo, and others. It's going to be remarkable, ladies and gentlemen. And book your room while you still can at the MGM and stay right on site and walk right to the conference from your room and never go outside. Oh, my God, it's going to be so amazing. Listen, this is going to be a remarkable conference, and I know we have already set records, VIP sold out. We're setting records the, the, every day, and I don't want you to miss it because the theme of this conference is the era of new finance. This is going to be a remarkable, remarkable two days, ladies and gentlemen. I can't wait to meet every single one of you. Let's get started. Hokoku Bank launches Japan's first deposit back stablecoin. Last year it launched uh, the, an app and which allows citizens to earn points and from the local Suzu city government and spend them at certain stores. This is a theme that is going to build in this video and I think you're going to love every bit of it. Now, this is Christian Carlo, who I will be having a fireside chat with at XRP Las Vegas. You will have the opportunity to meet Chris at the Future of Digital Assets Benefit Dinner. It's, I'm telling you this. How many times will you have the opportunity to be in the room with these people at the same setting ever again? It's not likely. These people are very busy. They're top industry leaders and, and, and people in this space. You need to be here to get this experience. There's nothing like be here in person. Take a listen to this group. And I'm fascinated by digital, as you probably know, and certainly I'm sure your listeners know, over 130 countries right now are at work on central bank digital currency. 50 are in advanced stages of development. Um, the uh, UN predicts that by uh, 2030 we will have uh, you know it doesn't ripple doesn't require you to ever use One xrp second. even in a trade One i mean second. the cool thing here is that any my apologies here we go sees a nine wholesale in operation 19 of the g20 are working on this right now china's already placed their digital currency in 260 million wallet holders and is banning competition by blocking uh crypto and so whether the united states adopts a digital currency or not it's almost irrelevant CBDC is coming and Americans are going to be dealing with it. But stable coins are also coming as well. That's right. and, and, that, and that's an important innovation as well. And that may be, at least for now, the free world's um, uh, response, or at least America's response to this innovation. The future will feature both um, uh, CBDC and stable coins. The real question we need to be asking is, what are the value sets inherent in that? Are we going to leave it to the value sets of closed societies like China, which contain within them uh, surveillance and censorship, or are we going to assert our own value sets, values in our constitution about economic liberty and freedom of speech, freedom of expression? 
And that is the difference. And I tell you, and so much more. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait for that conversation with Chris and I on stage at XRP Las Vegas. Get your ticket and don't miss it. It's going to be remarkable. Meanwhile, we see the world is shifting and pivoting for regulation of stablecoins globally. Look at what the Bank of International Settlements just released. Stablecoin regulations, stablecoins just launched on the XRP ledger soon too. April is explosive. You better believe it. Licensing regimes for stablecoins. U.S., New York, and you have all these different areas and regions highlighted here. Then a further diagram showing this from Smoke Dog. Yes, I've been sharing how important stablecoins are to be in the new financial system. Absolutely right. Records will be broken this year. BIS confirming how things are coming together, as you can see fiat back stable coins uk us regs dollar tokens us new york usd back stable coin there you have it ladies and gentlemen it breaks it down everybody else in the regions and the respective regions too let's keep moving here because today there's going to be the u.s treasury secretary janet yellen reinforced that banks are facilitating transactions to channel chinese goods to russian military face sanctions uh-oh Tether smack dab in the middle of it, says Row Rider. Paulo calls Tether a bank, and they just got caught facilitating transactions, channeling Chinese goods to Russian military. The Treasury addressed to Senate on illicit finance Tuesday. Just listen to this quick clip here. Holders, we believe that our mission is so important that we have not only created a new way of uh, making payments a new way of holding dollars, a new way of having a checking account. But also we created the first, you know, if you want to call it in that way, the first uh, over collateralized bank, right? So that's also why not all the banks are happy with what we are doing, just because we, we are showing that you can make good money and not be greedy and not um, risk customers' assets. And not be insolvent. And not be insolvent. It's a nice idea, and I love it. And I'd love to see Custodia Bank get what they deserve, which is a license in a Federal Reserve Master account so they can participate in the banking system and show everybody inside the banking system the transparent it needs to be there. Because the truth of the matter is Tether has not been as transparent as they need to be. So this is going to be a target for them. Ashley Prosper says, for those who don't like clicking links, you will find the Deputy Secretary, Wally Yadiemo, who is going to te has testimony right here, what he's going to say, and what he's going to say is this. Tomorrow, Deputy Secretary of the Department of Treasury, the Honorable, uh, it is Wally Yadiemo, who will say to the Senate, We've seen Russian, in, Russia increasingly turning to alternative payment mechanism, including the stable coin tether, try to circumvent our sanctions and continue to finance its war machine. I wouldn't want to be tether. I have said this. <laughs> That's a problem. Now, how it ends up un, you know, being resolved, I don't know the answer, right? But it's a problem. Further evidence that the Federal Reserve, meanwhile, all of this is going on, has been experimenting with CBDCs for many years. If you think one will not come to the U.S., think again, it will be a CBDC-backed stablecoin, and I believe that too. And you can see here, such as the Fed, it shows uh, years with CB, <laughs> experimenting with a number of years with CBDCs, frontier technology product for commercial reasons. This paper reflects on some national experiences, but put forward the types of sandbox regimes and innovation support the central banks. It goes on down here to say, uh, instant settlement network known as Fed now in 2023 now that stable coins cryptocurrencies with their value pegged to government currencies short term securities and some type of commodity offer another private sector solution to payment delays by making transactions possible 24 hours a day the world is getting ready to change rapidly with the onset of stable coin legislation now, I want you to listen to this quick clip here. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, uh, collage clip. Sandra Rowe from Paris Block Week this week. Listen to what she says and then the clip from Brad Garlinghouse to follow. Shout out to DAI for this clip. Can I add just one comment to um, some of the trends that we've been talking about? I can't tell you which bank, but let me just say big global bank who is currently working on a lot of what I would deem as more hybrid solutions. I've had 
their senior executives even say that as public chains create tools and the ability to meet the requirements just as Lana is doing and, and, and other chains are working towards, they would prefer to work towards that direction too. So the concept of like, there's no way a corporate's gonna ever use a public chain, that's going away. The question now is, are there flavors of offerings and tools that meet the requirements that enterprises need? And that will drive a huge amount of not only adoption and usage, just think about how, some of the, how big some of these corporates are, but also, more importantly, it will help also solidify, I think, I'll be a little controversial here, some of the best in class chains that are out there and there will be a distinction. I think there's gonna be a marked distinction between the top, whatever, 10, 15 chains versus the rest. I think that's absolutely right too. Keep coming. And it's gonna be those offerings to meet the requirements. There you go. The ICO boom. And you know, I think in some ways the ICO boom wasn't particularly great for crypto, but you know, some good things probably came of that, just like you know, what's going on with stable coins. Uh, I said somewhat controversially around that period that I thought 99% of crypto, at the time there were 2,000, not 19,000. And I said uh, that I thought 99% of them would probably go to zero, and that didn't make me a lot of friends in the crypto world. Uh, you know, since then I've been very wrong, I guess, because now there's 19,000, so we've moved the wrong other direction. You know, I, I would agree with Gavin. Uh, it's not clear to me whether there's a place for all of these. But I also think as you go from, you know, first generation technologies to second generation, you get, you know, more specific use cases for specific uh, types of solutions. And look, I think we even have seen with what's going on in the NFT market, you know, the gas fees associated with NFTs are in some cases astronomical. And it, are, the, are the underlying layer one technologies able to support NFTs in the, the, the kind of first generation? And I think we're, we're finding probably not. You know, and we need to find better technologies that can support NFTs because I, I don't think NFTs are going away by any stretch. Amen. So, I mean, w when it comes to all of those coins, do you expect there to be some sort of, I mean, some inevitably will collapse. We, we've seen that already. Um, but in the end, I mean, just a few, a few hundred. I mean, I, I would go with scores. Yeah. I mean, but more than dozens, maybe scores. But, you know, do, do we need thousands? I'm not sure. What a great comment, no doubt about it. And I do think we're going to see a thinning of the herd, no question about that. Uh, keep your eyes on Circle and Ripple, says Ray Fuentes. Shout out to Ray. Stablecoin issues are the new sheriffs in town driving this market higher. There's no question about it. And I don't find it to be a coincidence that Ripple has positioned themselves to prepare to launch a stablecoin this year understanding the possibility for stablecoin legislation to come in the same year. This is remarkable, and I think it is going to be an explosion on the network for XRP Ledger and the demand, especially when you get stablecoin legislation to match it. It's going to be incredible. Now, this is a sign. If you ever wanted a sign, Sologenic and Corium will be on stage at XRP Las Vegas, and look at what's going on here. This takes us to the two-headed dragon that I talk about often. 1.6 million XRP are living on Cosmos ecosystem using the XRP Ledger Corium Bridge. Supercharge your XRP Ledger native assets today. This is just the beginning and it's massive. And it's just getting started. The two-headed dragon is when you see that interoperability so people can use XRP every day for what they need to, market makers and market participants, and then when we get the ETFs approved, you're going to see the second head of the dragon come out and start to scarf up all the liquidity, just like we're watching happen to Bitcoin currently, and that is going to create an enormous supply shock right there. And I can't wait to watch all of that unfold. It's all in front of us. It's going to be so amazing. But that brings me to this. Shout out to Real XRP Boy for this one. He said, I'll take stable value exchange mechanism for $589, Alex. <laughs> yes, indeed. This is uh, Dr. Rajan, former IMF governor, former Central Bank of in India governor too, I believe. Uh, 
uh, or managing director at, at the IMF, one or the other. He's been at both of those. I do know that. But Dr. Rajan, super, super cool, very nice guy. I asked him at Ripple Swell in 2019 to talk about XRP serving just in the same role like the bank or coin did as a bridge currency. I believe this before I was ever uh, in the YouTube world or had my own channel, you know. Uh, I believe this in 2017 when I found it, and I believe it even more today. The mic, please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, my name is Bradley Kimes from Investment Perspectives and Cryptoneers Documentary. I wanted to ask a question about globalization. If you could talk about the idea of the old concept of the banker coin and a neutral asset being in place of a global reserve status of the dollar and possibly that being XRP. Uh, uh, um, you know, uh, what you're asking for is whether there's a possibility of a global currency. And to some extent, that's what Libra was trying to do. And as I understand it, that's different from what XRP is trying to do. And, and, and the reason is, is as follows. As soon as you go to maintaining the value, right, some kind of stable coin, uh, a whole set of regulatory concerns get triggered. I have to make sure that there is corresponding uh, financial or real assets backing this, this notional value that, is, that they seek to maintain. That looks a lot more like a bank, right? Because uh, you're promising some, some claims which are fixed and uh, uh, that requires regulation for reasons I just talked about. Now, once you get an army of regulators, every central bank looking at it, then the question is, have you added a whole set of transaction costs to this, and is it, worth, uh, uh, is it that, that useful? As I understand it, what, uh, what is attempted with XRP is not so much maintaining the value, but offering a vehicle for exchange which is quite different because there you can have value fluctuating. All you need is value to be stable for 10 seconds while the uh, whole transaction takes place. And as a result, uh, there's a whole different need for regulation. You don't need to regulate value. I don't care. So long as there is some value, the transaction can certainly take place. And as a regulator, I'm not so worried about either this displacing my fiat currency because you're moving from one fiat currency to another. It's just an interim value. And it's, it's a means of exchange. But it's neither a store of uh, value nor a unit of account, et cetera, et cetera. Well, there you have Dr. Rajan answering it. And the best part of all of that is we didn't hear a no. <laughs> right? We didn't hear a no. Now I want you to think about auto bridging, pathfinding, automated market makers, and how they are going to work to keep the liquidity very balanced in the network and the price very stable, but not capped. Huh? I don't know what to say. I mean, this is super, super exciting to me. You know, uh, this is why, you know, obviously, you know, it's interesting when World Bank refers to XRP and XLM as stable coins. It's inspiring to me when uh, Mark Carney, the former governor of the Bank of England, a several year partner to Ripple, also speaks to the G30 and calls it a coordinated global stable coin. Speaking of XRP. I know that there's plenty of people out here that say it's even impossible. But the thing is, it doesn't matter what I think. And in fact, I'm not married to the idea. I just, I, I see the things and it's saying, are we, are we watching this become a global stable coin of some sort? The reason it, it, it's worth asking the question because, you know, we're seeing enough people and not only from the World Bank and uh, Mark Carney, the former governor of Bank of England, and I know a lot of people believe that they're smarter than those people, and I get that, and they got their opinions are stronger than that. But like I said, I'm not married to this. I just want to find out if it is or isn't. Can we rule it out or not? And truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter what I think or someone else thinks. What matters is how bankers, regulators, and legislators view it. That's what matters. And we need to hold off our judgment until we find out from one of the, those sources collectively. We're going into the freedom zone, ladies and gentlemen. I certainly believe XRP is a world reserve bridge currency. And I believe that Dr. Rajan sat on that stage in 2019 and told me it could be too, and you wouldn't need it to be uh, price set to do it. 
is what he explained to me. And with the on and uh, 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 with the introduction of pathfinding, auto bridging, and AMMs, I believe you have some of the key components to help serve XRP's greatest role as a world reserve bridge currency. Now we're going into the Freedom Zone, digperspectives.com, a great way to support the channel for almost nothing. Click that Freedom Zone button and come on in. Today we're going to have a little fun with the woke culture. <laughs> You're going to love it. Come on in. All right.